President Akufuado says government will continue to provide the needed logistics for the Ghana Police Service to deliver on their mandate. Delivering his fourth State of the Nation address, the president tasked the service to purge itself of the corruption tag that the public seemed to have about them. We spent a lot of money to ensure that the security agencies that are charged with maintaining law and order and keeping us safe are well resourced to enable them to perform their duties. Police numbers have been increased and will be increased further until we meet the rec recommended ratio. The police have been provided with more vehicles and equipment than they've ever had, including over 600 vehicles and three incoming helicopters. Yeah. There are now more opportunities for police officers to undergo training on the job to make them better prepared for work in our communities and keep us safe. We're building upon and improving the capacity of the cyber, cyber crime unit to confront and neutralize the criminal and dark underbelly of modern technology and the cyber world. The government will continue to work with the management of the police service to ensure that there's proper and adequate training in modern policing methods and the equipping of the servers to enable them to enable them deal with crime. Mr. Speaker, government is committed to improving the conditions of service of all security personnel, including the police. But nevertheless, I think it is my duty also to point out that public perception of the police continues not to be the best, and they must make a comprehensive effort to earn the confidence of the public. We cannot run a country of law and order without a well-trained and accomplished police service that has the respect and confidence of the people. I acknowledge the work they do, but I urge them to work harder on their reputation. And we do all acknowledge the work that the Ghana Police Service and all the security agencies have been doing, and those words from the president quite apt. Let's find out from security analysts what else the security, uh, you know, uh, setup or security apparatus in the country can do specifically now that we are heading to the polls in 2020. Mr. Adams Bonner, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Good evening and thank you for having me. As a security analyst and, uh, I mean, observing from, from, from where you are, apart from kitting the Ghana Police Service and by extension all the uh, security agencies, what else can they really do in one, cleansing their image and then also preparing themselves for December 7? Well, yes, I think one of the most important things they need to do as, you know, uh, police officers would have to do to rise above, uh, you know, party politics, rise above the, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the they call it the, the political structure we have in this country for instance the president everything the president couldn't have said it better everything he said about them when it comes to the per, uh, perception uh, corruption perception index and their own image and all that everything is true about them and therefore they need to change for the better but then there again uh, we have a test case currently ongoing and probably you want to call it a, a dress rehearsal for 2020 to see how the police could respond mm. if there was any confrontation. And it has to do with the MPP's own internal, the, you know, intra, uh, you know, uh, party activities. The, where yeah, the, the, the primary, are, MPP's primaries. The primaries, exactly. Where they are beating each other and, you know, uh, knocking each other down and the police is looking on and not arresting them. Mm. And so my mind is that if, if these things are happening and the police isn't arresting them and prosecuting them hmm. before the law, it doesn't matter if this is an intra-party or within an internal activity. A crime is a crime. Hmm. And so if they cannot do this and tomorrow it becomes an inter-party where you have maybe MPP, NDC, are we then expecting the police to act? Hmm. I, I don't think so. And so hmm. mine is that these are things probably... Uh, the police would have to address, but there again, how do they as address it? When you have uh, DCs and MCs and regional ministers superintending and chairing the various security councils, I mean meetings, and so for me, 
the, the issue is dicey, a bit murky, mm. and so we will continue to blame the police. But then, if you go deep into it, sometimes the police cannot be blamed because what is required for them to, to do what is expected of them mm. is not there. Would you, so, would you advise that, uh, or at least, is it time that as a country we um, decouple the appointment of the heads of the police and uh, other military agencies, specifically the police, because they are closer and work closer with the civilians. Would you advise that as a country we are uh, old enough to now decouple the work of the police from uh, being appointed by the government of the day? Because over time, there has been the concern that because the government in power appoints the leadership of the Ghana Police Service, there is the probability that they are going to be working for the government of the day and not the people of the country. Can we maybe of try course. the UK model, maybe? Well, yes. I mean, they, they, these are these are these are constitutional matters because I think that clause is, a, is an entrenched clause where the president would have to appoint what do you call them, the heads of the security agencies in, in consultation with the Council of State. It's something that most of us have pointed to. I have pointed to that, written articles, journals about this, you know, spoken about this, you know, at length. But unfortunately, because it's usually, you know, uh, suits or benefits the, the executive at the time, uh, usually they, they don't do anything about it. And so mm. as far as I'm concerned, if that portion of the Constitution is amended, if it is amended, what is going to happen is that we, we are going to have an independent police service. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at it. When a police officer is injured by a civilian, a police officer is killed by a civilian, within the matter of days, that person who did it would be arrested. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you go under uh, the act. They would dig you out. You remember the case of, uh, what do you call that? Uh, what happened the, in Kaswa? Well, not, not, yeah, not even the Kaswa. I'm talking about Kweku Ninja. Okay. Kweku Ninja and, and Tola were killed and buried under concrete. The police found them mm. and arrested everybody who was involved. Mm. You know Inspector Shilevi when he was killed. Right. They arrested, they perpetrated, they arre they've arrested almost all of them. Mm. The one that happened in Kaswa. But then if you go back and you look at other civilians who have been killed or have become victims of crime, murders and all that, mm. we have too many cold cases. And mm. the simple reason is that that's pretty the core where you say, okay, you touch them, they will come after you. If, the, if our police service was very independent, mm. I am sure that policing would have been one of the best. Even the, the way it stands is still about the second best in, in the sub, in, in, in Africa also, it's about the ninth or mm. so. And so as far as I'm concerned, our policing can do better if the constitutional arrangement is amended. But unfortunately, it is usually rhetorics where they come in, they do a bit of recruitment. The president mm -hmm. was talking about recruitment, which is good, 4,000. Mm -hmm. But then if you, every year, about 1,000 police officers leave the service, some of them die, some of them retire, and then uh, some of them resign, about 1,000. Mm -hmm. And so in the last three, four years, about three, 4,000 of them have left, mm -hmm. which the president will say, we have recruited some. And so he's basically replacing, replacing those who have left. I would have wished that the numbers would have gone up by now, maybe since the inception of the MPP government, maybe 10,000 police officers, another maybe 5,000 prison officers, fire right. service, immigration. But probably we aren't going to have that now. Okay. We would have to leave it here for now. But uh, in a very brief answer, what can the police do now, especially uh, with um, Ayahuasca West Wagon uh, still quite fresh on our minds? What can the police do now? to reassure the populace that they are better prepared, they are in a good position ahead of December uh, uh, 7? I think they need to go into a lot of dialogue. They should dialogue with the political parties, go out to do, you know, engagement, engage the citizens, the political parties, sensitization, mm. to reassure the people that we are there for you, mm. and therefore if uh, there is anything during the electionary period, please fall on us. Or else, I believe that, I mean, I also wish to work on things, like you said, they're mm. so fresh in our mind. But they should go out there and do a lot more of sensitization and engagement of the populace.
Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Adams Bono Security Analyst helping us understand, the, I mean, what the president said. And it looks as if um, they have also given indications that they are polished for 2020, December 7, before, during and after the elections. We'll keep our, an eye on their activities and keep you posted as well.